Well, Jesus said to some of the fishermen that he had just recently met, put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. And when they did this, they caught so many fish that their nets were starting to break and they were amazed with the catch of fish. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever had that, that opportunity to just be amazed at the catch of fish? Well, I did. I did. A few years ago, um, I was out with my brother-in-law on the lake, and we were catching crappies. And it was like in the early spring, and we were just catching them one right after another. I mean, we would just put our hook in the water, and up would come a fish, and out another one, and they just kept coming. Oh, my gosh. It was so much fun. And when Jesus' disciples had that experience, he said to them, now you're going to have this much fun <laughs> catching people. So most people I know, most of us around the lake area, we know how to catch fish, or we know people who know how to catch fish. Catching from the shore, from the dock, from the boat, from the bridge, and out on the lake. I just saw some out on the lake this morning. So even those of us who do not really love putting leeches and worms on a hook, we do enjoy the fun of catching sunnies and crappies and perches and bass and, and if we're really lucky, walleyes. So I've learned from hanging out with my family and friends that it, it does take special skills and experience to know what kind of bait and lures and hooks and lines are needed to catch fish. But what, is it, what does it take to catch people with Jesus? I mean, we're talking about evangelism here. Reaching out to people with faith, with Jesus. After all, it's part of our name. Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We're Lutherans and we are evangelists. We share the stories of our faith with other people so that they can get caught up to with us in the wonder and in the blessing of faith with Jesus. So are there any special skills or experience needed? Well, Jesus spent three years teaching his disciples. They wrote down what they learned. The instructions are still in here. We learn it. We learn it in Sunday school. We learn it in confirmation. We learn it in adult faith formation. We learn it around our tables at home with our families and our friends. We practice evangelism in our fellowship with each other over coffee and dinners, sporting events and on trips and, and playing cards and fishing. And a good way to think about evangelism is to let Jesus talk us through it like he did with his other disciples. So number one, start putting into deep water. Even if you've tried it before and it didn't work. In other words, be willing to go beyond your comfort zone one more time. Talk to somebody about God, about your faith. Let the conversation just be natural because you never know. You never know how helpful it may be for someone. Just last week, one of our members told me that he was having a casual conversation with someone um, in the community at a meeting, and he mentioned something that we're doing here at First Lutheran Church, and they said, you know, we've been looking for a church for our family. I think we're going to come and check out First Lutheran. You can always invite people to an upcoming event going on here and if it seems appropriate, you can share. You can share a way that God has been part of your life. Our ninth grade confirmation students right now, they're writing their faith statements so that they will have their own real words to share with other people about what they believe about God. 
If you're with someone, sometime who tells you that they're going through things that are really tough, the most important faithful thing to do is to listen. To listen with love and with compassion. And if it seems right, you could offer to say a prayer. You know, it just might mean more than you know. Number two, let down your nets for a catch. So let, let down that surface stuff, that superficial layer, and be authentic, be real, be yourself. Mostly listen to other people, learn about them, be patient, wait in the boat. My grandpa taught me that, wait. You know, silence actually can be a golden opportunity to learn more deeply about someone you're with. Number three, don't be afraid. Jesus tells his disciples that a lot because fear holds us back. Fear of what someone will think of you. Fear of saying the wrong things. Fear of rejection. Fear that you're not good enough or not a smart enough Christian. Remember, Jesus started out with a bunch of fishermen, not religious leaders. And they weren't perfect. Peter, who Jesus chose to lead the Christian church, admitted, You don't want to be around me, Jesus. I'm a sinful guy. But Jesus does want to be around sinful people, people who are real, people who understand life, who understand that none of us is perfect, that all of us need a friend, and we need a savior like Jesus. Don't be afraid, Jesus says. From now on, you'll be catching people. And what I learned a long time ago is that Jesus is the one who has the power to make happen what he says will happen, happen. When I trust Jesus, I can do all the things he asks me to do. When his spirit nudges me to reach out to someone, the spirit will give me the words and the actions and the right timing that God wants me to reach out. I can just leave fear back on the shore and follow Jesus' nudges to where the fish are hanging out. Four. Sometimes, more often than we fisher people want to admit, The big ones do get away. The people we really wanted to reach for faith with Jesus, the family member, or the dear friend, doesn't want to hear about God from us. And as hard as that is, we need to let that be okay. Because we're part of a whole boatload of Jesus fishing people. And even when the big ones get away with my bait, my story, my invitation, I have to believe it still feeds them. My job is to love them, to pray for them, to trust that God's got this, and that somehow, Somehow, God's got them. Our part in evangelism is important, and it makes a difference, and not always in the ways that we can see. And you know what? Sometimes it's us, the fisherwoman or the fishermen, that God is fishing deeper for, teaching us more about how to do this faith thing so that we're more comfortable and more thankful, 
just to be part of God's fishing expedition. Five, from now on, you'll be practicing catching people. Actually, you'll be loving people. That's like Pastor Joe said last week. Because love and grace are what helps our evangelism reach people in all the different places you go and all the different things you'll do in your lives. So when we hear the voice of the Lord saying, like the prophet Isaiah did, who will I send and who will go for us? Let us be the people who say, here I am, send me. And starting today and through the rest of your life, let Jesus' spirit be your fishing guide and enjoy it. Amen.